Once again, it's a pleasure to have you join us on Just Business and Not in More. Today, we want to take a critical look at the aspect of information management as a tool for effective business collaboration at a time like this. This is the focus of our discourse for today. Thank you, Nyoso, very much for joining us on today's episode of Just Business and Not in More. I'm Obafemi Craig saying a big thank you to you out there. It's coming to you live from the studios of Lagos Television. We'll be right back after this time out. Today to talk about this with us uh, is uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Ayod, um, Oyedokun Ayodeji uh, Oyewole. He's the president and, of course, uh, chairman and governing council of Rima Foundation. So it's a great pleasure having you come join us today on the program. The pleasure is mine. Uh, well, I first must commend you for the time that uh, you really spent with us, uh, taking time to wait for the time we'll be having this with you. We say a big thank you to you once again, sir. The pleasure is mine. Now, let's look at the issue for this, guys. We are looking at um, information management as a tool for effective business collaboration. How can we understand these, and uh, what narrative can we really uh, take out of this statement? Can we say it to be true or otherwise? Well, um, before we go into that, I think it would be ideal for us to have an insight into as to what um, business collaboration is actually all about. Mm -hmm. um, you will agree with me that the um, present realities in terms of the economy, you know, has actually opened the uh, opportunity for businesses, you know, to embark on various uh, forms of collaboration in ensuring that uh, they are able to achieve the set objective for which those businesses are actually set up. Um, collaboration comes handy when an organization um, tends to look up to another organization having strength in certain areas that could You're actually... Talking about yes. interdependency, interrelationship or connectivity exactly. or synergy. Synergy, you know. Um, it could be between two organizations or more organizations. It could 
even be um, between uh, public and private, you know, organizations because by um, collaboration actually opens up the opportunity of business, you know, reaching their goals faster than relying on their individual strengths. Mm. So can we take this statement to be correct, that information management can be really used as a tool for effective business collaboration? That is actually correct because um, in any relationship, um, communication seems to be very important. And the only way you can ensure that um, you have effective communication mm. and a business relationship, you know, information management tends to go, um, uh, tends to play a very vital role in ensuring that uh, adequate information are properly passed or are adequately exchanged between or among um, collaborators or business partners. Now, let's look at the fact that um, it is a statement of fact, like you've said. Um, it is a, a reality that uh, we cannot uh, but contend with if we must look at it critically from the point of view of your analysis and seeing what it is in terms of collaboration and synergy. But in it all, how does this impact in the economy of a business for growth, for promotion, for sustenance, for development, and what have you? Well, um, information as uh, it's been referred to as the lifeblood of uh, any business entity uh, goes a long way when it is properly managed mm -hmm. in the sense that um, for any organization uh, to promote efficiency, transparency, accountability, and also be able to achieve the set um, objectives, you know, information is something that plays a very vital role and uh, the need for it to be properly managed cannot be overemphasized. So if you have quality information in place, you are assured of the fact that the decisions that will be made by such an organization would be of high quality. And a business that really want to thrive, that really want to progress, would re rely and require the confidence of customers and clients. And the only way you can ensure that is by making sure that um, you have uh, complete information, you have information that can be relied upon, you have information that is complete, information that is free of any form of ambiguity, and um, information that is sustainable that can really help the organization to stand the test of time. If I may bring you to some reality here, sir, we are looking at uh, the policies, the programs, the action, uh, li I mean, plan of government. But in all of this, Nigeria seems not to have gotten it right. Uh, we have, uh, if you ask me, there is always this ding-dong between the National Assembly and the Presidency. There is always this situation where we are saying that the policy drive of the government presently is not in the right direction. But CBN will come with their own uh, perception of how things should be done in terms of helping to sustain certain elemental you know, processes of the banking system and procedures, the other aspect of oil and gas, the NNPC is also there. And when you look at all of these calculation, equation, permutation, arrangement, there seems to be a no clear cut uh, focus uh, for economic policies to really thrive and really capture the essence of why they are created. And this gives, I mean, this calls for concern and it's really giving everybody, look, where are we getting it wrong? Mm. So my question here is, what can we do and where are we really getting it wrong that all of this policy seems not to seemingly work or achieve the set goals that it is really said to achieve? Well, I think uh, the major problem we're faced with in this climb has to do with the fact that information is uh, distorted. And uh, for policymakers, um, it's quite unfortunate that uh, some policies are being made based on assumption, based on what certain people in certain quarters feel they should be doing, rather than relying on the real and actual information that is out there, what the people actually need, what are those things that are lacking in the society. All, so all and some of these are not actually being put into consideration when it comes to policy formulation. And it's quite unfortunate that um, uh, it will be difficult for any organization or any um,
country to actually develop if info, the source of information being collected uh, cannot be verified and um, you know people cannot vouch for whatever information that is actually getting up there to people in governor uh, in government and um, you know at the end of the day you, you don't expect um, a miracle to happen overnight because whatever policy that has to be formulated has to be based on solid information that is properly captured and um, the needs of the citizenry you know being um, adequately um, attended to now can we now say that uh, given the uh, explanation or narrative you've just uh, uh, given now can we say that we can really or should we rather blame the information managers that this has to be held accountable for not putting or so to say data as well captured as information base or information data are not well uh, disseminated or that whatever it is that they are to be responsible for any laxity for whatever it is and the way policies and programs and plans of government should really be capitalized on to achieve basic essential quality economic drive and sustenance for our country Nigeria well primarily I think um, uh, I, I wouldn't want to blame the information managers in the sense that um, for any industry to thrive in any part of the world there has to be laws there has to be rules and regulations there has to be standards there has to be policies there has to be specifications that would ensure that people that are appointed uh, people that are tasked with managing information you know conform to certain standards and requirements when it comes to you know information handling information um, dissemination and so on and so forth but in this climate it's so unfortunate that um, you even hardly get to hear or even see any meaningful information management related laws in place so and quite a number of people that are charged with managing information um, today do not even know why they are doing what they are doing uh, quite a number of them don't even know their roles and responsibilities when it comes to managing information beyond just asking um, professionals or employees or workers to swear to an oath of secrecy might not really be enough because uh, professionals really need to be grounded they need to be enlightened they need to be trained they need to go through a series of certification when it comes to um, the way and manner in which information is actually being managed and um, you agree with me that this is conspicuously missing in our society today. Um, people have been drafted from different departments, you know, to handle some sensitive information that ordinarily uh, wouldn't have um, been so. Mm. So these are the primary and fundamental things that I personally think uh, we need to look into. Government really need to, um, you know, they really need to show commitment in this area. Uh, to ensure that there are laws and policies in place that will strengthen the information management industry in, in, in Nigeria and Africa as a whole. Because without that, we'll just be, um, you know, we'll be hovering around the circle and at the end of the day, the situation will still continue to prevail. So how do we now connect the necessary connectivity that should be connected between the private sector, those you know, driving the private sector or corporate world and the government sector. How do we kind of uh, allow this two to come to a common ground to see this aspect of information management as not only key to the vision of making, of driving a very prospective uh, economic uh, policies and uh, uh, programs that could really aid growth and development but in it all, they must connect. Sure. And they need to connect. And that connection is what can really help, you know, build the viral economic growth we're talking about. But this is missing. And you know it is missing. Sure. So how do we correct this? And what will be the way forward? Well, um, talking about uh, bridging the information gap, I think um, uh, the advent of... Um, the Institute of Information Management, it's a blessing to us in this part of the world. 
And uh, this is a common ground that um, actually uh, brings to play the opportunity for both public and private organizations to come together, synergize, mm -hmm. uh, share lessons learned and best practices mm -hmm. in ensuring that um, we have what we refer to as information governance in place. Because um, uh, you'll agree with me that um, there can never be any corporate governance in the absence of information governance. So information is, the, um, is very key, it's very important. And um, having IIM platform, you know, it's, it, 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 it has also helped, you know, to help sensitize the need for this all important industry, you know, to be paid attention to. Mm. But uh, for, uh, to another school of thought, this is to them a talk shop. But in terms of practical essence, the practicality is not really effective. And it's not only not effective, it's seen as not just good enough to really meet that drive that it should give. Mm. And that is to them, it's just as saying nothing is happening. And I think I also want to share that view that nothing is happening. So what can we do? What must we do? What can we do? Okay. What must we do? And what, how can we marry all of these differences so that it can be better for everyone? Well, if you'd ask me, I would say that we've really made um, appreciable progress um, ever since we started in 2004. That's over 13 years now. And um, in terms of awareness creation, a lot has really been done. But the um, unfortunate aspect of it is the fact that government is yet to come to them. And you will agree with me that in this part of the world, any project or any program that does not have um, a sort of government intervention or government involvement and government declaration of interest, you know, it's always diffi uh, difficult for such program, you know, to have that kind of overnight um, effects. So I think primarily because Hardly can a, a private sector drive uh, such a huge initiative like this, and you expect to feel that impact, you know, within a very short while. So I think what we need to do is um, to ensure that there is more of government involvement in all of this that we're talking about, and also to help governments come up with certain blueprints mm. that we can actually... Mm you know, bring to the table for effective implementation. I think if we can think along this line, it will really go a long way and uh, the impacts will be there for us to see. Uh, you always use the term, you will agree with me, you will agree with me. Okay, let me also say to you that mm. you also agree with me that uh, we have in place today, if we look at it critically, so many economic blueprints that are there, but they seems not to be working and that's my worry. I don't know whether you, you, I'm sure you will also agree with me that I'm correct. Of course, I agree with so you on that. Where, where, where can we correct I, all of these imbalances? I, I, think, so that I think what is responsible is the fact that, you know, uh, beyond um, favoritism and um, so on, you know, if government is really sincere about making some of these things come to play, they get the right people, the most qualified people, professionals in that particular area, you know, there will be meaningful impacts which uh, people will be able to relate to it. Mm -hmm. But in a situation where you have a beautiful blueprint and when it comes to execution, you don't have the right yeah. people in place, you don't expect anything to comfort from such. So I think engaging the right people at the right time to do the right things. And coordinating exactly. the we'll, information management that yeah. is necessary. Will really go a long way, you mm -hmm. know, in helping us achieve some of this. Well, I know that uh, our time is far spent and uh, we just need to really look at how we can uh, resolve this issue. Your parting words, if you must go. Well, my parting word would be uh, to encourage our viewers out there that there is hope. And um, we at IM Africa, we believe that um, um, the country will uh, improve. And uh, we all should see information management as everybody's business. It's not just the responsibilities of uh, information managers alone, because we all, we all generate information on a daily basis. We store information, we use information, uh, we share information, and we dispose information. So information management is something we should make 
a cultural thing and try to imbibe best practices in wherever we find ourselves. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Oyewole. Oye Dokun, Ayodeji Oyewole. We thank you very sincerely the uh, for the little you've been able to share with us. And uh, I know that um, if anything at all, uh, there is some aspect. I would have asked that we play the clip, uh, but then time is not of our, on our side here. Mm -hmm. Where the Lagos State Government with the Harvard Business School mm -hmm. came together in a collaborative effort to look at how uh, governance can be better to the people because government felt they can do it alone. So government felt we need professionals, experts to come together, synergize together mm -hmm. and be able to, you know, tap into the ideas and of course, uh, thinking of all of these uh, experts and uh, be able to drive a yes. policy that could affect positively an impactful and meaningful essence of what economic prosperity should translate to, you know, in a dem democratic government. I don't know if that uh, is a, sh v a view you also agree yes, with. I do. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Iwole. It's nice having you on the program. The pleasure, is mine. Well, so that's the way it is today on Just Business and Not and More. Thanking you all there for being part of today's edition. Hope to, hope to see you again tomorrow, God willing.